It is 5.01 and I am calling the Board of Finance to order. Um, Mayor Moreau Weinberger cannot be here today, so I am filling in for him. Um, the first, um, oh, by the way, um, I did hear from Councilor Chang. He is going to be a little bit late. Great, so thank you. Um, we will go ahead and get started in the interest of time. The first item on the agenda is the agenda. Is there a motion on the agenda? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the motion carries unanimously. Is there anyone who would like to speak at public forum? Only, there are only a few people that have signed up. Okay, seeing no one, I am going to close the public forum and we will move on to the consent agenda. Is there a motion on the consent agenda? So, there a second? Great. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the motion carries unanimously. And that takes us to our first deliberative item, item 4.01, use of council initiative funds for the Voices of St. Joseph Orphanage Memorial and Healing Garden. Um, I'll let you okay. start, okay. Councilor Carpenter. And, uh, thank you. And I believe there's a few, one or two um, participants online. I know that Molly Gray is online, so maybe you could uh, admit her. I don't know who else. Uh, Molly, I have um, allowed you to talk. I believe um, Christy Swanson, um, I'm going to allow you to talk as well. Thank you. And if I may, uh, Brenda Hannon, who's a former resident of the orphanage, I've asked her to join the meeting today as well. Um, we're raising funds on behalf of the former residents, so I felt it appropriate to ensure that her voice and the voice of the former residents was um, also uh, supported and available here today. Absolutely. Thank you. And I have enabled Brenda's microphone as well. Well, thank you. Um, councils have seen the request, and um, we've also provided them with the case statement. Um, for your fundraising. Um, in some fashion, while this is so perplexing and difficult and complicated, this particular um, request is pretty straightforward. I, I think I'll let the folks who've been involved speak more about the history, um, but this is part of an initiative that um, has been pulled together by former residents um, to help them um, reconcile the past and help us as city councilors and, and the city itself remember the past and remember our duty to continue to serve children. Um, and so this is just one piece of it. Um, so maybe um, Molly or Christy or Brenda could um, lead off and give us a little bit of backstory. Sure, absolutely. Uh, maybe I'll begin and then uh, turn things over to Brenda. Uh, by way of background, as you may know, there was an orphanage on North Ave, the St. Joseph's Orphanage, that was in operation for over 125 years and housed uh, more than 13,000 Vermont children in that time frame. Uh, closed around 1975 or 1976, it was a licensed Vermont facility. Uh, DCF, or formerly SRS, placed children there. And what we know from not only an investigation led by the Attorney General's office, which I was previously part of and also part of the start of the restorative process, is that there were allegations, um, unfortunately allegations that could not uh, be prosecuted of abuse in a number of forms, um, physical abuse, sexual abuse, mental abuse, there were allegations of homicide. And while the traditional criminal justice system both because of the statute of limitations challenges and because of evidentiary challenges, couldn't provide the justice, the traditional justice that the residents deserved. What 
um, did come out of the investigation and ran concurrently to it was an incredible restorative process. Um, the process is called a restorative inquiry. Uh, it's a form of restorative justice that aims at bringing to light and really documenting what occurred for the public record for all time. But it is led, has been led and continues to be led by a group of survivors. And uh, with that, I, I do want to turn it over to Brenda to talk about what they've achieved, which is just remarkable. And this memorial garden, which would be at the site of the former orphanage at Keyslich, Keyslich Park, Keyslich Park, I think I have that right, um, would really be an opportunity to not only honor and memorialize um, the experiences of the former residents, but be a place for the community to come together and to heal. And the design infrastructure and everything has been led by the former residents together with uh, Burlington Parks Waterfront, Parks Recreation and Waterfront. Um, so we're really at the stage of it being shovel ready. And now it's the opportunity for the community to get involved in making it a reality. So with that, I'll stop talking and, and hand things over to Brenda, um, who is here on behalf of the former residents. Uh, Brenda, are you are you with us? Yes, I am. Over to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was just asked to attend this afternoon, so I don't have uh, very much prepared, but I just would like you to consider and be aware of how important this Memorial Garden healing space will be to all of us survivors, but to also to all of the children that have gone before us um, to be remembered, to be recognized, to no longer be forgotten, and to hopefully make it a peaceful healing space so in the future we can remember the children of yesterday, but also concentrate on the children of today and tomorrow so that what occurred could never or will never happen to our most precious resources who are our children. And this is what the importance of this healing space means to all of us in the voices of St. Joseph's Orphanage Group. And we are certainly hoping that you get on board with us and make this become a reality. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else you'd like to add? I don't think so. I mean, certainly Brenda spoke for everybody. I put a few notes on my request and I certainly think it's so appropriate. Um, I know the group is asking everybody they can think of, but I think we as counselors should give some of our funds directly uh, and remember that city back in the day, I'm really even old enough to remember SRS. And when we as a town were directly involved in welfare services. So it's, it's cast on all of us. And I, I hope we have a better system now. I think we've learned. Um, but as Brenda said, this is a memorial to both what went wrong and what should go right in the future. Excellent, thank you. Um, is someone ready to make a motion? I will move to approve and recommend the City Council approve and authorize the designation and expenditure of $10,000 in budgeted City Council initiative funds to support the creation of the Children of St. Joseph Orphanage Memorial and Healing Garden. Thank you. Is there a second? Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the motion carries unanimously. And thank you to everyone who's on the line working so hard on this initiative. And thank you, Sarah, for bringing it forward. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, items number 4.02 and 4.03. Um, are connected and I'm going to speak on them. So if it's okay with the board, I'm going to speak about both of them because I'm also realizing uh, the reverse order would have perhaps been helpful. Um, 
as you will um, recall, um, we had a monumentous vote in November um, when the voters approved up to $165 million worth of borrowing for our new high school. Um, and these two um, motions before you are a piece of that. Uh, 4.03 is um, actually the first piece of borrowing. Um, my office is in good contact with the school district. And um, as a piece of that 165 million, the first tranche we've decided on will be 40 million. And that will be um, a bond anticipation note. We anticipate this money getting us um, through late summer or early fall when we go back out to the bond market. And so that is the purpose of doing this bond anticipation note as we've talked to both bond council and our financial advisors. Um, that it appears to make the most sense to do this bond anticipation note, kind of a short-term borrowing um, to be able to get us through to the fall and we'll do one big bond issuance then. Um, and then 4.02 is kind of our standard authorization. And you've seen this every time we go to do um, any kind of capital bonding. And that allows us to reimburse ourselves, or in this case, the school district to reimburse itself for capital improvements that it spends from its general operating fund in advance of getting this capital money. So I'm happy to answer any questions, um, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, both of these are um, in the course of doing regular business. Um, so I don't think um, there's that much to see here. But again, um, happy to open it up to questions and or motions. Yes. I have one question. Sure. When the um, school district presented this uh, bond in, um, they laid out the scenarios that they would spend the money, like the rate of the state spend the money. And is this consistent with what they talked about for you? Yes, it is. And it is, thank you. I meant to put that in the memo. It is consistent with what we looked at in terms of how it might affect our credit rating. We came up with several scenarios and this is right in line with that. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Are you amenable to just making one motion? I am very amenable. Okay. Uh, with that, I would recommend that the council approve both of the attached resolutions under 4.02 and 4.03. Thank you. Is there a second to that joint motion? So, thank you, Councilor Barlow. Any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And those both pass unanimously. And that brings us to item 5.01, um, which is our initial presentation on the police budget. Um, as happened last year, we are envisioning um, this department probably being one where we will have two budget presentations, this being the first, we'll take some feedback, um, and then we'll come back probably uh, first week of June. Um, there are, I realize, many areas of interest with um, police issues. Um, as the chair of this meeting, I am going to keep us focused on issues related to the budget, and there may be um, some issues we need to kind of put into a parking lot for later. With that, I'm going to turn it over to the acting chief. And Lisa, fair enough. How can I forget yeah. that? <laughs> I will share my screen and if needed, just thank you. Thank you, everyone, for having us uh, and for giving us this opportunity to share the work that's in this. Um, this was uh, helped immeasurably by uh, CAO Shad. 
by uh, Lee Sverino um, and was also reviewed by, of course, the mayor, et cetera, uh, and his team, um, Jordan and Samantha both gave very important input to this. Uh, and you know we're, we're uh, hoping to get feedback uh, and to be able to, to hone it even more between now and June. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, I know that it's it's almost a broken record, but uh, the fact is that the biggest thing that we face at this moment still is our headcount uh, in the department. The, the, I think an interesting story that we're going to try to tell here is that the headcount isn't just about officers. Uh, officers are the farthest down with regard to you know past historical norms and current uh, current authorized headcount. Uh, but there are other roles that we're building too. Right now, we have 27 officers on patrol. We have 64 officers total as of May 1st. And that hasn't changed between May 1st and today, the 15th. Um, there are 58 of those 64 who could be deployed, uh, and 27 of those are on patrol. Next, please. This is a picture of the, the cliff that we've had and the cliff that we are seeking to climb again. Uh, again, not back to those norms of, of 97, which was the average from 2015 to 2020, but to the authorized 87, which is still a good deal higher than where we are. Next, please. But we're doing it not merely through uh, the author, through sworn officers to get to that 87. We're also seeking to build other kinds of uh, resources. And, and some of those are unique to this police department. Um, they've had great success. They are the result of, of uh, work that you as the council authorized, uh, the Public Safety Continuity Plan of, of December 2020. Um, and we are working hard to fill those roles as well. Uh, we have six CSOs currently out of an allotted 11. We also have a CSM, so that position is hired. Um, and we have a CSS or, or community support supervisor and five of our allotted six CSLs. So we're doing well with those roles. You'll see some of those folks here. Uh, you'll see our, our service dog. We have a, a dog who works with the CSLs and is a therapy dog, Rocky. Um, and you'll see some of our, our staff there. Lacey Smith, our CSS, is seated in the upper right corner picture. Uh, Yusuf um, Abdi is, is uh, one of our CSOs. He's seated. Uh, and uh, our new CSO is, is in the lower picture as well. Next, please. This is a, a picture that I was trying to work on to sort of give a picture of how the proportions have changed within the department. Please forgive me with regard to the two numbers that are in the right hand uh, pie chart. Uh, Samantha corrected me on that and I didn't make the correction in the document. The percentages are correct, 37 versus 63. The numbers of dots that you see, which are representative of, of individual employees are correct, but the number that you see under sworn 51 is wrong. It's 87 is the authorized for sworn. And the number that you see under professional for 37 is also incorrect, it's 51. So uh, what we've seen is we've seen a shift in, in the proportions of the police department, uh, one in which we are, are emphasizing sworn police officers less and other kinds of employees more. Next, please. This is just another way of looking at it, which is our actual counts. The actual count in May of 2019 versus the actual count right now. Next, please. Uh, here's pictures of uh, our hiring. We are, the upper right hand corner is our officers. I regret that one of those officers has resigned during the police academy experience. Um, we're looking to make sure that that doesn't continue. We always want to keep as many of our academy recruits as we can. Uh, the employees in the lower part are a range of non-sworn, of professional uh, positions. And I, like the rest of the profession, am trying to move into the terminology of professional and not civilian. Don't care for the term civilian. I think it, it unnecessarily dichotomizes the workforce into uh, what is not civilian. We're not a military unit. Uh, we certainly do have sworn officers, and that's a distinction. Those officers take an oath under pains and penalties of perjury, and it allows them to do certain kinds of things, including swearing to documents that everything they produce is ultimately uh, under pains and penalties of perjury that our other employees don't. All of us take oaths to the city, including all of you, uh, but the, the oath that is taken under pains and penalties of perjury is unique to the police officer role. However, that doesn't mean that the others are civilian employees. They're not. They're professional employees. And they include a number of folks down there, including uh, dispatchers on the, the far left, 
uh, including the CSLs, two CSLs that are in that group, a redaction specialist that we hired, and then CSOs uh, on in the photograph, my left, but on, a, on the, the right-hand side of that photograph. Next, please. Thank you. Recruit and retain and patterns. Um, we've, we've looked at this before. I've updated it through this year. Uh, I think that the, the bottom paragraph, which was suggested to me by CA Oshad, is very important. It talks about the degree to which other agencies are experiencing this around the country. Uh, it's a survey that's not necessarily entirely representative. It's not sort of a mathematical survey or something done by, you know, uh, Zogby that has a statistical significance. It's a self-reporting of 182 agencies, all of which are, are members of the Police Executive Research Forum. Um, but their sworn staffing decrease has been real, uh, and yet not anywhere near what we've experienced here. Uh, similarly, their uh, resignations are up, but also not where we are. Um, and, and that puts us in a position of, of recognizing that we do have to work hard to rebuild these gaps that are larger than other agencies, despite the fact that the profession as a whole is, in fact, experiencing some of this. Next, please. And that's this goal. Uh, we've articulated it before. We're still working on it. This budget is important to make that, to continue to make those moves. Our, uh, you know, our efforts after this budget was approved by you last year uh, have been honest and, and full, uh, you know, uh, we are, are pursuing them with full energy. Um, we brought aboard three uh, lateral officers in calendar year 2022. I had not anticipated that, so that was a good thing. Um, we had four police officers in the, uh, excuse me, three police officers in the, the class that graduated in calendar year 2022. Um, and they are now full-fledged officers. They've all completed their field training. We didn't lose any of them, and we're very happy about that. Uh, Carolyn Irwin Morris, our recruiting officer, as you saw in the previous slide, brought in six police officers in January uh, for the February of 2023 Academy in this calendar year. Uh, as I said, we've lost one, but the other five are anticipated, excuse me, the, the four of them are anticipated to graduate in the, the very beginning of June. One of them injured himself uh, and is still an employee. We, we hope to cycle him into another police academy class, but he's not going to be a graduate of this current class. And he's not going to be an effective officer by the end of September slash October, which is when we hope those other four will be available to us. Uh, and that's great to have those four officers out and in field training during the summer helps, but they don't count as effective officers yet. But we're making good progress. What we have now in front of us is the opportunity to bring aboard another five to six for the, for the August 2023 class. And we have some laterals in line. We need to have at least three, right? This, this is our ambitious but achievable goal. 6.3 recruits per class, and we're on track for that. We've achieved, we've achieved it so far, and we're on track to continue it. And 3.4 laterals per year. I hadn't anticipated any in 2022. So the fact that we got three in 2022 was good. We have not yet had any lateral hires this year, but we do have laterals in our hiring process. I'm hopeful that they, they will be able to come aboard. Will we have all 3.4 for calendar year 2023? I hope so. Uh, as I said, we're looking at two right now uh, with another who I believe is, is showing interest. So this is the strategy, and this is a little bit changed from last year. Uh, the retention, keeping the personnel. The competitive contract is something that you as a, uh, a council delivered, and, and we are grateful for it. Recruiting, attracting new recruits, lateral officers, high, strong hiring incentives. We are working on that still, and we're seeing good progress on it. And then strengthening CAPE, because the three-part strategy has evolved now to talk about what else are we doing. CAPE is, of course, uh, the, uh, the, the system that we have for uh, alternative, excuse me, I apologize, not alternative resources, for other resources that allow us to address social service needs, uh, crisis advocacy and intervention programs. Um, they are, we're seeing strong social service public safety gains from them. Uh, we want to solidify those. And a component of that is Burlington Cares, which we've talked about so much under other names, including the Crisis Team, including the Cahoots Esque Team. Next, please. Thank you. The retention, first and foremost, via this contract. We're grateful for it. We get, we're going to need to do more, I think. We are still seeing more uh, departures than we'd like. That includes people who hit the 20 year mark uh, and we want to be able to retain those. Um, there are other officers who are, we anticipate losing to other agencies 
Uh, I'd love to be able to try to figure out how not to lose those officers. Some of that is making certain we can maintain internal momentum, which includes promotions, includes the opportunity for people to have different career paths. Uh, next, please. Recruiting via marketing. Um, and, and we do have uh, ideas for this. Um, it includes a lot of uh, ideas around digital content. Um, we have an RFP out. We've got responses for that RFP. We are still getting those responses. Um, the RFP is, is publicly available, was publicly available. It's probably not on the website any longer, but uh, can easily provide that to any of you who are interested. Um, and the uh, responses we got are, are all good responses. We're lucky to have three very strong responses. Uh, right now, a sticking point, frankly, is, uh, you know, as always is the case when bringing aboard uh, a team is, is the price. Next, please. And part three, the new services. Uh, so that's the door sign uh, above the CAPE door. And, and CAPE, although it is in the Burlington Police Department, is a separate part of the police department. There's a great deal of autonomy. There's a great deal of, uh, of independence. Um, and there is a, uh, you know, going into that part of the building can often feel a little different. I, I, I was glad to have the opportunity to share that uh, little tour of that with Council McGee. Um, I'm happy to give such a tour to anyone who wants to come and, and visit. Uh, and more importantly, I would encourage you not to come with me, not even to come with Lacey Smith, but to go and, and speak to the people who are in Cape uh, and, and get their take on why I do believe they want to be integrated into the largest public safety component we have in our city, and in most cities, which is the police department. Um, there are a number of different parts here, all of which I think uh, function best when they are integrated as much as possible and where their collaboration can be as seamless as possible. Next, please. And this is the, the, this is the meat. This is, so I, I moved through this as quickly as I, as I could. Um, I'm happy, I think you all know, I'm happy to go on about any of those slides if you ask. Uh, but we wanted to get to this picture here which is uh, where the, the rubber hits the road, as it were, it's the meat and potatoes, it's your, you know, take your pick of metaphors and, and expressions and similes. This is, is the, the place where the dollars and the donuts are. Um, I guess that was a cop joke and inadvertent one, it wasn't purpose. But anyway. No, we didn't do that anymore. We didn't, it's in much better. So. Uh, and, 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 you know, I, I'm hopeful that you've reviewed it and it somewhat speaks for itself. Uh, we, uh, we do have a budget that we are working that is, is level set in all ways, aside from our need to continue to grow. So we do have obviously built into this budget the anticipation of, of growing towards that 87 with regard to the sworn, of growing towards the 11 with regard to the CSOs. Uh, that one CSL that still eludes us. And it, it may be more than one. I, I believe that one of the, our current CSLs is interested in transitioning into police departments. And that's great, but it means that we'll have one spot in the CSO role. And again, as we experiment with these other pieces and as we begin to develop these other pieces, including CARES, there is uh, growth there as well. And so as a result, you know, we, we do, uh, we worked as, as hard as possible to make sure that it is a, uh, a budget that is level funded with the exception of the person. Um, and I think that's, that's about it. Um, I'd you know, love to take questions and, and hear what everyone has. Yes, Councillor Barla. I just I had a question about the growth corner. Um, does it take into account um, any retirement or you know normal attrition? It does. My so if, if uh, I don't want to have to make everybody switch back to that uh, one chart, but one of the things that we included as a as an ambitious but achievable goal was a fifty percent improvement in retention rates. Um, the retention rates that we've experienced uh, over the past several years is uh, about excuse me uh, the overall retention is around forty percent. That's the aggregate retention. That, that's you know that's a that's a number that, that cascades. In other words, that includes people who've had plenty of time to leave and, and probably are not going to leave now until they retire because they've hit eighteen or, or fifteen years. The likelihood of departure is small, but it also includes where you know classes that were just hired, and it includes the the recruits that we currently have in the academy. So the aggregate of all of those groups is is forty percent retention right now, um, and so uh, the the the. Object is to increase that by 50%. Uh, 
Um, what that would do is it would narrow us to a world where we still lose, I, I still anticipate losing retirees, uh, but I hope to lose a little bit, a, somewhat fewer uh, recruits and somewhat fewer current officers. Uh, but the projections I have um, do, uh, in fact, account for departures more than merely retirement. That anything else would not be realistic. So uh, I have projections that basically sort of keep up with this statistical goal and say, uh, you know, in, in April of 2024, I anticipate losing an unknown person, one unknown out. In, in uh, May of 2024, I anticipate losing a named person who is hitting his or her 20-year mark. And I account for all those as I project forward in order to, to establish that goal that we established last year, that we're trying to stay on track for, of, of getting into the 80s and close to that actual allotted headcount by FY20. So it's time to turn. Yes, President Paul. Oh, I think so, actually. Okay. Probably the best person to answer this. Um, so, um, so looking at the, um, the last slide, the, yeah. the, last, the last slide we go to the slide is under airport services, it says that the um, standardized budget 614 over that. Actually, that's in FY26. So, FY24. Four yes. initial budget is five seventy eight. I see that number. Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. So then, when I go on to um, I go to the actual budget that is the spread um, sort of looks like an Excel spreadsheet, not that one, but the one that's attached. Oh, it would have yeah. the little yes. line by line. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So on that one, um, it, it that one has revenues. So on the revenue, There's only one in uh, Sorry. Yeah. 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 So the revenue on that one, the revenue which is right here is one. Here it is. One million one. It's one point one. So I guess the question is, if it's five hundred seventy thousand expenses, there is something else that's not counted. Right. So what is not counted? Yeah, everything besides salaries is not. Yeah. So where is it? It's in full fiber. It's, it's, so still, it's, still, under, it's still in so it's uniform. On the, all right, on the PowerPoint, uh, the one right there in front of you, mm -hmm. where, where is this other number? Oh, so we, the operating budgets per se are not in this chart. This chart was this chart right. just the salary portions. Okay. Okay. So if you go to the other one, that's, yes, it's got to be somewhere. Where is it? It, is, the, it yeah. is not. So in this one here, this yeah. which has been that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. In here on the line item real estate, 051 airport, it does so not have line item operating expenses. We haven't gone back to trying to figure out how to do that. It just still only has salaries in the 051 budget. Everything else is still in 05. So there was supposed to be um, a you know, what was called and it is on five on the airport division there should be a should be a so barely matching so, and i realize that it's not an exact science right. because you've got different there are different ones and depending on who's there yes. is is how much it is but it should be a little bit closer to ballpark for five 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 hundred to yep. one point one million yep so so the fear that the the theory is all police officers that are assigned to the airport salaries are in the fiber. How they get there, which is training, uniforms, gear, vests, all of that is, is in 050 because it's part of that whole recruitment. It's not tracked by body. Once the body exists and it's assigned, we don't sit there and say, how much stuff are you wearing on your gear? But don't they place? all wear about the same? No, right. So if you put what we, we do when we work at the airport for the contribution is we go if there's six people at the airport, it's it's six. Well, when it was 100 people for officers, it was six percent. We just did the percentage based on the count. So if you wanted to do that, yeah, right, it was it was 12, it was 10, right. whatever it was. But I mean, but the well, so I, I mean, not, I, so it's not in in a expense line item expense. It's not tracked as a line item expense, but there is an associated percentage, which is six people of the operating budget of 050. So if you wanted to just take the old the 000, 050 budget, the uniform budget, and you wanted to divide that by uh, 
87 by 87 oh, and times it by 87. Right, and times it by six, five by 87 and times by six, that's your value. And so the right, bottom so line here earth. is that so we have not yet, the only thing that is in 051, which for people following along at home who may not know all our codes, is our airport line. Um, we, right now that just has salaries. We could then add the benefits and other costs and disaggregate that from uniform services. Right. So I think what's with that, Commissioner uh, Council Paul is saying is why isn't the whole budget, yes, operating budget? And but I'm trying to explain why it's we'll leave it something a little bit closer. Totally. Than but, five it could, but we would never have any expenses hit it. I guess what I'm getting at is we could budget the allocation there, but there would never be any expenses because each person in the department doesn't have an expense. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I, you know, it depends on who they are yeah. and how long they've been there. So if you want to do the math for yourself, though, uh, maybe next year, maybe that's an improvement yes. to this chart. I think that's year. a good, yeah, that, that, it's, it's, that, that is helpful. Math. And I think okay. between Lise and my office, we can figure out how we can make that present. So, so, yes, that yeah. less confusing. Okay. Thank you for that. No, I always do what you say. <laughs> We know what it is, but you can tell that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a 10 page budget and it's, it can, it's been daunting for someone who doesn't live and breathe this all the time, you know, as to where are those numbers are coming from. But, um, and, and even for people who think, well, is I go, you know, I have to think, well, what is a I go? You know. So, yeah, well, I've got that now. It's <laughs> but, yeah, anyway. And, and, it was, and it was the council that had asked. Uh, it's only been two years since the airport was taken out by request. So we're still improving. Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. No worries. Okay. Councillor Jen, go ahead. Um, thank you, CFO Chad. Thank you, um, Chief and your co presenter. Um, along the same lines as Councillor Paul's question in terms of the airport. I wanted to understand the distinction between airport services and uniform airport services, and also to clarify whether or not those services are contracted and how much of it is a contract itself. Yeah. So, so um, the airport, there is an agreement between the airport and the police department for yes. airport security services, right? Yes. And the current agreement is that there's six police officers assigned, that's a key word, assigned to the airport, which means that's where they report, right? Yes. So if they're out sick, they're on vacation, the, 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 the obligation is to fill that slot. And when we fill that slot, we fill it from what we call uniform services, which is the downtown reporting staff, you know, police officers. So the agreement is for six police officers at the airport. So that's the agreement. Um, I'm sorry, what was the second part of your question? Yeah, um, yeah. Yes, I, I understand the, the contract between the police and the airport. I completely under, understand it. And I believe that also the city council is definitely looking into a resolution to look into that type of contract, I think a long time ago. Um, but what I just don't understand is as part of the budget, you have a line where it's just airport services and another line, uniform airport services. I just did not understand what's the difference between those two. I'm not sure that I understand the two mixed together. Other than you can't have you can't have an airport services police officer assigned unless they're coming from the uniform pool of officers. I, I, is there a, there's a there's um, a line on the spreadsheet in the PowerPoint that totals uniform services and airport. Oh, I see. I see. Yes, maybe it's the, the subtotal there. So I think um, maybe what might help Councillor Jang and let me know if this gets at your question is it's really the same pool. They're all uniform services officers. But two years ago, this board asked for it to be separated because as Lise mentioned, 
Um, the officers at the airport are a commitment that we're making to the airport. And those six officers then become unavailable for our general pool of uniform officers. And I think we wanted to be able to understand both what we're paying for those officers and the revenue we're getting from the airport. So we're just tracking those six separately, although technically they're all part of the same pool of where we're trying to get, they're part of that 87. Okay. And in the um, chart on the last part, the last slide of the PowerPoint, it's a little bit further confusing and I'm just gonna pull it up so everyone can look at it while we're talking. Um, because since you're 20 did not have an airport. <laughs> because um, looking here, um, FY 2021 20, and 22, we actually had uniform and airport combined. They were all in this uniform line. It wasn't actually until last year that we separated them. And so that's why I made this combined line down here so that you could have an apples to apples comparison because I realized if you tried to compare FY20, this number up here to this, it wasn't apples to apples because you'd have to go look at airport and, and add them up. So if you want that apples to apples, it's more like, actually, you know, what we spent in FY20 on uniform and airport is actually remarkably similar to what we're asking for in FY24 for uniform and airport. Does that help? Yeah, yeah, this is absolutely very, very helpful. Thank you. Um, that's all I needed to understand and thank you for clarifying. Um, yes. And the other question that I have is, Catherine, for uh, Chief of Chad, for you, and it is specific to the percentage of the police budget compared to the general fund, right? And also yes. wanted to understand within that, within the police officers fund, how much is of it is going to non-sworn, non-uniform, you know, staff, and how much of it is going to uniform, you know, police officers? Right. Um, you, so, you that, yeah. so the admin budget is actually separated. We, we did separate admin as well. We separated um, uh, airport and we also separated admin, which also was the way it was done many, many years ago, but it is now a separate line item. So you can see that now for the, yeah. okay? So, yes, so, so it is separate. So and, and in admin is only professional, staff and not um, police officers, not sworn personnel in the admin side. The police, of Ch chief of police, for example, is in the uniform budget, the 050 budget. He is a sworn person, therefore he is in the 050 budget, even though he is technically an administrative functioning police officer. Mm -hmm. So, so the 050 is, uh, Councillor Jane, the, the 050 is in the long 10 page spreadsheet, the, 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 the multiple, page sheet. On this sheet here, uh, the, the one that we're looking at on the screen, or the one that is very similar that's the last page of the PowerPoint presentation, basically uniform services and airport services are all of our sworn police officers. That includes myself, and it includes everyone down to the level of, of recruit in the police academy. And so the aggregate total of that uniform and airport services, that is the salary line for every sworn employee of the police department. Administration uh, is the professional employees um, who, are in, who are not in dispatch. Um, and then uh, we have dispatch and communications, and then we have community support, which currently includes the CSOs and the CSLs. Uh, and we're actually, I, I think that it's probably best to break the CSLs, out, excuse me, the CSOs out of that and make that a CAPE category. But that's for another budget, uh, one that it really talks about only the functions that are part of CAPE. Um, answering your um, question, Councillor Jang, it would not be difficult. Um, I don't have it 
right now, but it's a quick math exercise that I could get you after this meeting okay. um, to just go through the budget. And I think you're asking for personnel costs of how much is going to uniform services. And then I would um, actually then give that to you for administration, then dispatch and community support. And how much each of those is a percent of the BPD budget. And then um, someone else had asked for this at a previous meeting and I have it, but I left it in my office. The percentage of all of the departments as a percentage of the general fund budget. So I can get that to all the counselors um, after this meeting. Wonderful, thank you. And that person was me uh, to just <laughs> yes. how much, how much. I'm, so, I'm about. sorry, I forgot to send it along and you will get it this time. No problem. And lastly, you know, this presentation is, we're calling it as an initial presentation and are we expecting another one or this is this is the police presentation? Budget yes. presentation. You just missed the beginning of the meeting. We did something similar last year, and I think it depends a little bit on the amount of feedback we receive at this meeting. Um, we're calling this an initial presentation in case we received enough feedback that we would need to circle back. So um, I guess I'm going to just leave that open for now. Um, as you can see, this is the full presentation you got from every other department. So if we don't need to meet again, I'm sure you would all love to have an evening of your lives back. But if we need to, um, I think we're signaling with the word initial that we as the administration are more than happy to meet again as needed. So I think in the next half hour or so, we'll probably come to some consensus on that. Thank you. Great, thank you. Other questions? Yes, answer to me. Thank you, Joyce. Um, my questions are, uh, I guess I'm just been looking at the shifting public safety resources over time, like you know, one budget or two, and they're working with the collective worksheet. Um, I'm shifting a little bit different, and uh, the numbers I'm curious why in, in calculating the totals for um, using community support as an example. Um, not using the full personal services totals on this chart here, correct? Yeah, that, that was just a simplification of um presentation style, and salaries obviously is the biggest part, and then benefits are usually anywhere between 43 and 57 percent, just because they're city centralized benefits, it's not anything that the police department has any control over. Um, so we just didn't confuse it with benefit costs, but it could be another addition if you wanted to. It just, the number would be bigger simply because of benefits, but it's not a line item budget that the police department can do anything about. Sure. Yeah, I think it was really for simplification purposes, and this is a chart that we have been um, tweaking since FY21 to make sure it has the most useful information for people and that it's a helpful addition with the detailed budget and not too confusing. Um, and we were trying to uh, have everyone focus on the major line items, but if it's distracting to not have it line up with fringe benefits, we can certainly add those. It's just, um, the main, as Lise mentioned, like the main items that we can control are salary, overtime, and attrition, and then benefits flow from that. But it was not, um, it's really just that, just ease. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it, it is helpful to know the totals for what we get here. I think 
which you have in this sheet, right? Did you see oh, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something comparing the zero, and I think that's where my confusion comes from. It's looking back. Yes, right. Yeah. You're just trying to balance out yeah. cross check, right? right? Which is always good. But mm -hmm. behind the scenes, the cross check for the salary is done. You just didn't do all the benefits and all the other, you know. Few semesters of accounting and college yes. jumping forward yeah. and getting yeah. forward. Yeah. <laughs> so the benefits are there. It's like a great CAO's chat is saying it's just a matter of how much how much more do you want in this already kind of tiny chart. <laughs> you know, you can only fit so many lines. So just decide what is really important to put in this thing. But the operating budget's not in there either. I mean, there's a lot of things, everything is here. Yes. I didn't add it to the list to add the next year. Yes, I put it on mine too. Okay. <laughs> Other questions? Yes, Councilor Bergman. Um, I think it will be hard. I'm looking at the 10 page document because that is the, the budget document. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be really helpful to have, in addition to the actual amounts, the budgeted amounts, and if they're is um, a, and it, obviously if there are greater expenditures, we would have had, we would have done budget amendments. So I, right, you know, that, mm -hmm. but if we have not spent the monies, and I know that we did that, you know, sort of here between, this is sort of like historical, if I think it is really important to put these numbers that we're gonna have them, and it really is, there, there's context that's needed in relation the, the budget. So the actuals compared to what we budgeted and then if there were retained earnings, then sort of a, a narrative description of what we could give them would be helpful. Otherwise, I don't know that this information is as useful as it should be. And then I hate to say it, but I mean, there's there are a couple of line items where there are significant decreases. I saw in um, in expenditures, and that's that's I you know could be great, could not be great, um, but there are also um, some significant changes, um, increases in uh, in the requests from the twenty three budget, and I, I think it would be very helpful not just to me but to the public to uh, to get an explanation of what that why you know and. So, um, and, and I don't think that there's anything nefarious or anything. It just would be, okay, like we are going to be, and you sort of said it. Um, I'm looking at uh, police uniform services, for example, 500, 5,000 100, the full time, we're going to be going up uh, $600,000. And I think that just sort of matching what the increase. Is anticipated to get would be just helpful, very straightforward and simple. We're looking in, with this six hundred thousand dollars to get this many officers. You know, uh, maybe I, I've, I, I didn't I, I I didn't find that to be particularly helpful. But, uh, you know, just something some narrative that matches up the um, the lines with what we're going to be getting. And I saw something. Here's an example where we have other personnel services, special duty, where we're anticipating $50,000 less, $56,000 less. Um, and that would be, you know, if that's a positive thing. So yeah, I think uh, which, which the line is 5,200 on page four of 10, 105. So that's the outside duties jobs, right? Uh, yeah, I'm reading what you have here. You tell yes. me. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that that's part of the deal. But that's why I think you're asking yeah. this narrative because we know what that right. means. The you inside do not. Yes, and I'm you know like I can muddle through. You could convince me. I really want my constituents to so understand so that they can see. You know, are we spending? what we need to be spending or what we can be spending and what are we spending it on? And what are we saving? And it's just real clear. It's not smoke and mirrors. And I'm not accusing anybody. 
of that. I'm just saying, let's let's put it out there. And I, I don't need we're, we're taking. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, want it. Yeah, no because I do think it should be done. You know, pretty systematically where things are even. I don't think that that needs to be explained unless you want to say you know good things for that. But otherwise, um, you know. So, you know, there's not all that many, but there are enough of them that, um, and I'll sort of leave it to your discretion in terms of the what is significant, what is not often, uh, no, capital e equipment, we're saving uh, $28,000, that's, that's pretty good, right? People yeah. should know that. I think Councillor Barlow was saying this exactly yeah. last week or the week before, saying when we can save, we should be telling people about saving. So here's an opportunity to, to do that as well. So that would be, I think. Excellent. So I'll work with um, Lise and active, the acting chief, and I think we should be able to produce that. Just one note on your um, request uh, on which columns appear in the budget. This is something we came up against last year, and it is the one of the uh, limitations of new worlds. And it's the number of columns you can have. So that may be something you and I can talk about behind the scenes because I think it's a max of eight, which means you know I prioritize actuals and I think that was helpful for the other departments. Here, we'll just make a different kind of calculation and we don't have to get into all that now. I just want people to know um, I can't just add all of the budgets here with all of um, the years we have because we'll just run out of space. Appreciate that. Other questions or comments? Um, and I'm just noting we have about 15 minutes left. Wouldn't be the worst if we ended early if there were no other questions or comments. Anyone online? Going once, going twice. Anyone else in the room, any further comments? Okay. Well, I would take a motion to adjourn. Or I would adjourn us without any problems, any, any <laughs> objections. <laughs> That's the word for. I'm going to do that. Thank you to everyone. I am adjourning us at 5:59 without objection, and we will right. see everyone upstairs in about half an hour.